Objections overruled. A video response to Christy Carter Gibson. Answering critics of William Branham has made the most compelling case for women not wearing pants regardless of the culture and regardless of the fact that both men and women wore essentially the same garment during biblical times. She is saying that both men and women during biblical times were essentially wearing the same garments. The statement is both audacious and amusing at the same time. If they were wearing essentially, as she claimed, the same clothes then why would God had to make a commandment against cross-dressing? Her misconception stems on the fact that during biblical times men and women wore long type of dress, but does it mean they are the same essentially? A big no. The distinction of clothes between sexes lies on the details rather than of kind. According to the book Manners and Customs in Bible Lands by Fed White, the difference between the dress of women and men needs to be noted carefully. The dress of women was different in detail rather than of kind. They too wore tunic and cloak. We may suppose that in every case their dress was a little more elaborate. Doubtless they wore longer tunics, larger mantles than their menfolk. So, it is false to assume that men and women essentially wore the same clothes. Answering argues that because pants were originally designed and intended for men, it is therefore wrong for women to wear them, since they pertain to a man. Deuteronomy 22.5 Following this logic, I wholeheartedly believe that it would be hypocritical to not apply the same argument to all other articles of clothing that were originally designed for men that women have so immorally adopted. T-shirts. The t-shirt we have today is the inner garment during biblical times. T-shirts are not made for men only. However, women must be cautious in wearing them. They should not wear fitting types as it would expose the contours of her body. The basic concept of clothing is not actually just to cover our skin, but to cover the shape of our bodies. We have no problem with men only on women, that we must take extra steps so it is not for her to look naked. Tennis shoes? That is not tennis shoes you are showing. That is a truck tailor shoes made by Converse. This is what you had shown. This is what tennis shoes for women look like. Belts? The belts we have today is the girdle during biblical times. Belts are not made for men only. However, there is a specific design intended for the sexes. Beret hats? Button-down collared shirts? The hat we have today is the headdress during biblical times. Hats are not made for men only. However, there is a specific design intended for the sexes. Women cannot wear button-down collared shirts, as they are for men only. In suit coats. The suit coat we have today is the mantle or outer robe during biblical times. Suit coat not made for men only. However, there is a specific design intended for the sexes. Clearly, if pants are an abomination because they pertain to a man, and the reason that they pertain to a man, regardless of the culture, is because of their original intent. Clearly based on scriptural and historical arguments, pants were never intended for women and it should not be worn by them. What Christy is actually doing is just making assertions. It is obvious that she could not present anything to refute the post that pants is for men only. I would like to turn your hearts and minds to the very serious issue of men's deodorant and the sinful nature of the menfolk who wear it and things that pertain to women in order to smell good, to smell like women. To be honest, I could not help but laugh out loud. She equated a person wearing deodorant as wearing clothes. It is obvious it is not. Where in abyss did she got the idea? Then she says men wore deodorant because they would like to smell like women. Oh my goodness. From what planet is she by the way? Is as clear as the sun in the sky, that deodorant are designed according to sexes. A man using woman's deodorant would have almost no effect on him because men's odor are stronger than women. Deodorant was specifically made to stop the odor especially for men. It is out of necessity and not some cultural fad. From an early time in history, as early as ancient Egypt, women have tried to smell good. 
perfumes, scented bath, even candle wax applied to our underarms was used in order to mask the unpleasant scent of perspiration. The problem with your history is that you are making it short-sighted. History had shown that pants were forbidden by women by the time of Christianity. Why is that? It's because they viewed it as men's clothing. Although for both clothes and deodorant we always used the term wear, but in context they are totally different. In clothes, you cover your body, in deodorant you only cover your odor. Or she might be thinking she can wear a deodorant without having to wear clothes, because for her they are just the same. You cannot equate wearing clothes to wearing deodorant. This is also an attempt to muddle the issue. Perfumes and deodorant are two different things. Perfumes are designed to make the women appealing to the men. That is why in the ancient only women wore it. This is in contrast to deodorant, where it is specifically designed to fight off body odor. Everybody has odor whether we like it or not. So deodorant was made out of necessity. In a nutshell, Christie was not able to present an argument at all. She failed to refute all the points raised on the post made by answering critics of William Brantham. What she has is a classic red herring argument.